The sermon for the second Sunday after Pentecost is from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 8, verses 26 to 39. Uh, the sermon is entitled, How Much Jesus Has Done for You. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. How much has the Lord done for you? Now here in John 8, the disciples, right before this text, were caught up in winds and water that were too far to surpass by themselves. And there in the storm, there Jesus was, by his very word, calming the storm that was at hand. A radical miracle this was. Profoundly amazed the disciples were that even the winds and the water would obey Jesus. Another marker to show the disciples how much the Lord had done, but what was to come in his ultimate doing that is of the cross. And so, after that, they sailed to the country of the Gerasenes, and when Jesus stepped on the land, he was accosted by this man who was possessed by demons. A powerful legion that it was, and it left this poor man powerless, as his powerlessness was visibly seen by his lack of attire, no clothes as he was a residence among the tombs, even kept under guard by, by chains and shackles, yet he would break these bonds and the devils would guide him or lead him to the desert. The desert, a place of no life, a picture of no hope. What was he to do? There was no other possible answer to this life debilitating problem. For just as the man seemed powerless, at the same time it was the demons that seemed so powerful. And from the look of it, nothing could overcome what this helpless man was dealing with. The demons were setting up shop, their abode in this man's body, his heart and mind. There the demons were, and how overpowering they were for this helpless man. But see, when Jesus appears, as he stepped onto the land, how the tables had quickly turned. The narrative had changed. For what seemed to be powerful, well, in front of God, there the Word made flesh. No longer would this be the case. The demons address Jesus. Son of the Most High God, I beg you, do not torment me. The demons were pleading for mercy. Indeed, how the tables had turned, so powerful they thought they were. But now they come begging not to depart into the abyss. So they begged Jesus to let them into these pigs, and they departed to the lake only to be drowned and defeated. This is the miracle, all by the powerful word of God, and how this radically changed the demoniac's life. The people saw him, the demons gone, clothes on his back, no longer residing in the tombs. And Jesus said to him, as he wanted to follow him, return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. How much God has done for you. Because for this man of the Gerasenes, indeed the Lord had done much for him. Just imagine being in his shoes day in and day out. And there by the word of God, Jesus there, the Christ, reversing the curse, restoring him by his very word and how much God had done in that very moment to uproot his life of helplessness. The status has changed. 
Once helpless, now joyous. Once bound, now set free. Once dead, now made alive. The word works. The will of God that was done in his life because this is God's doing. The man just didn't say, I'll figure it out. I'll overcome these demons myself. No, it is the Lord who rescued this man from a sickness that seemed to have no cure. This is how much the Lord had done. No more desert. No more isolation. The greatest remedy was given to him. And you may say, as we look at this narrative, what a great miracle this is. And so it is for us. When we look in the mirror, we thank the Lord, don't we? Because we have the life of faith, faith a gift given by the word of God, given in the redemption of our Lord Jesus Christ. We look at life knowing that we have the stingless grave. That we live life under his name, loving and serving in the joyous reality of the resurrected work of Christ. Considering where our beginnings began, the garden, the tree, the fall, the repercussions that sin and death entered the world, all inheritors we are of this. And there our Lord is to reverse that curse for each and every one of you. And thus, like the demoniac, we, we proclaim what the Lord has done, don't we? That's the joy of the gospel, isn't it? So joyous it is that in our being we speak the Christ to those that need to hear it. Because we know this is the cure. If someone said you had the greatest remedy to the greatest cancer in this world, what would you say? Would you be quiet? Or would you tell them about Jesus? I think for us, at times when we tell people how much the Lord has done, we quickly shrink and say, that's not my job. I'm not good at that. I'm just not equipped for every question that I will encounter. Of course, yes, the devil is even in those details. See, the demoniac, the former demoniac, that, that is, who's proclaiming all that the Lord has done, he asked none of these questions for what the Lord had done. That is what he proclaimed. Simply what the Lord had done in his life, how much the Lord had done. This is what he was proclaiming to all that needed to hear it. And that is why when we speak of outreach or evangelism, those catchphrases, they kind of get under our skin sometimes. We say, I'm not ready for that. Yet as I always say, evangelism is of great joy because this joy is Christ. Because as we speak the truth of Christ, there we see our life, which is joyful in His name, delivered and accomplished by His work, defining you, your victory, and your triumph in this life of eternity. Yes, this is joy. But friends, in these grand latter days, I know we live in a dark world, bound by chaos and strife, the looming worry of the economy. I think inflation inflates our worry. You like that one? Inflation inflates our worry. It's not even in here. Wow, <laughs> so creative. <laughs> Uncertainty of the future, even the talks of drought, the school shootings, just evil simply rearing its head time and time again. And even in your personal lives, of course, internally, your spiritual battles, your physical sufferings, your affliction, and so the toil goes as there is what seemingly is a much troubled life that we have. And soon enough, when we 
say the word joy, we wonder, is there joy? See, it's in these moments, as these things compile in our hearts and minds, where we ask the question, how much has Jesus done for me? You know, in the midst of all that we're facing, the question is, how much has the Lord done for you? We we'll look at little Robert there, right? During children's message. That's right. <laughs> he was befuddled. The depth of God's love. How profound and, and deep his love is for us. I think we, we forget that as we live this life with so many of the challenges that we face. How much our Lord has, how much has he done for you? I know, friends, we, we take that for granted too much. We forget that all too often, and we fail to, to, to meditate and dwell upon that very reality. See, the demoniac, he was helpless, anchored down by demons. He, he saw what helplessness and powerlessness was all about. He needed to be rescued. He could not do this himself. And there the Lord was for him, and so it is for you. It's the same. Anchored down by sin and death, no shovel, no merits, no pious account of your works can ever merit you that emergency exit from the great predicament of sin and death. There is no exit by our own human hands. That is how depraved we are for every sin and shame and guilt in our life. And in that light, how much has the Lord done for you? And even more, how much do we need the Lord to do these very things? Understanding our spiritual condition it is Jesus who does everything. The Word made flesh, the incarnate Lord, Jesus Christ, came to the world to be the one to save you from your sins. To turn the table that could not be turned by human hands, but only by the work of Christ. His radical work, what Christ has done for you as he went to the cross. That's how much he did. All of his life, how much was always for each and every one of you. How much he came to stand in your place. Not only to stand in your place, but to bear your sin and shed his very blood in your place. To be the very sacrifice. That's how much our Lord endured all for the forgiveness of your sins. This is how much our Lord has done. And when the grave, the tomb seemed to be his end, our Lord was not done. No, he wasn't. Just as he predicted and foretold, there Jesus overcame the grave, proving not only that he is your perfect sacrifice, but by his resurrection, how much he had done to give you eternal life. Right now, that is your reality. All the uncertainty that you might be facing right now, what is certain and true is that your name is written in the book of life. How do you know? It's by how much our Lord has done for you. He answers the call. He turns the table. Death accounted for. Salvation yours credited completely to the how much our Lord has done for you. Of course. Crushing the devil's head. The evil foe has been defeated. This is how much our Lord has done, just as he promised. No longer bound, you are liberated. No longer wondering your sin and death covered. And they're like the former demoniac, the former demoniac, living life to the fullest in the greatest joy of Christ, 
There we too proclaim the joy of Christ to those that need to hear it. Because it is done, that is why we proclaim. Because it is finished, that is why we proclaim. It's because all has been answered for, that is why we proclaim, all by His blood, all by His work. This is how much the Lord has done for you. Yes, just like Robert. How every day we meditate upon this reality, knowing the depth of our Lord's love for us. But I'll tell you this, how much he has done, it is for you. It is for you. So go now in Christ, in his name, in his promise, in all that he has done for you. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please rise as you are able.